We are a team. As storytellers and dreamers, there is always magic to discover. Once upon a time, a Las Vegas showgirl and a comedian magician figured out that even with different perspectives, our adventures and experiences together are really just one big caper. Hey there, welcome to One Big Caper Podcast. I'm Athena and this is my partner Felix. We are going to talk about uh, something funny today. We always talk about something funny. Funny to us. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to start it off by uh, just sharing with the audience a conversation we were having the other day. Okay. I don't know. I think it was two days ago. And you said that you reminded me of the circumstance and that you would be traveling with a friend. And you said you went ahead and you looked up theaters and venues in that town to see if you could double, I don't know. I do this all the time. <laughs> Essentially, I was invited to Southern Colorado where some friends of mine moved and they've been living there for some time. They kind of asked for a visit from myself and one of my friends. And uh, in just that idea of that, it was an instant compulsion for me to look up the area and see what local theaters were there uh, to work so that I could moonlight and do yeah. a little show. Yeah. And so I thought this would be a great topic because, well, I mean, it was, it was a topic before this happened, but it just proved exactly how our brains work as performers that uh, we, we don't ever take vacations. We don't ever take trips for leisure. There was always some element of business involved. Always. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I see it as a way to to earn and share, you know, as a, as an entrepreneur, every show that I perform is an advertisement for the next one or for somebody to to book me for their company or whatever. So uh, it's a new market. Uh, I have not performed in this particular town ever before. And I thought, why not? But it's just, it's a, a compulsion to work when yeah, we don't take vacations. Yeah. So I, I'm thinking about it because I don't know if that's just uh, this level of performer that does so. Or if I, I'm, I'm thinking back, like when I was in the show, I didn't, I went on vacations. You know, I went to Hawaii for the first time with the girl's dad. I think and the difference. I didn't, I didn't seek out a show to perform in. <laughs> I, I believe the, the difference is between being employed and being an entrepreneur. Oh, okay. Maybe, yeah. Because as, as an entrepreneur, I think any, any person who owns their own business completely understands that you don't leave work at work. It's, work is always with you. Yeah. Uh, and, well, because you're always marketing. Right. You're always, you know... Building your audience. And in the big show, you were yeah. a salaried employee with benefits. Yes. yes. Yeah. And two weeks vacation a year. Right. Yep. Yep. That sounds like such a luxury to me. <laughs> and it's totally foreign at this point. I haven't yeah. had a real job in a couple of decades. So it's, it's just such a foreign idea to me. However, the good side of being an entrepreneur is that you can get away or don't work for a few days if you want to. Whereas that's True. not really, oh, it's I can't. It's I, not really possible as an employee. I can't imagine going back to a nine to five obligation or a, you know a five day a week thing. It's hard. Uh, I can't. I can't imagine. I, I did that this year, and yeah. I remember the day before I was going back to work, and I looked at him, and I said, "Today's the last day I have power over my time, sovereignty over my time." And it was really kind of sad. Like, I was really weepy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because it's been five years since I had an employee position. And it's, you know, came to a point where I just, I had to get a job. So. There are yeah. great benefits to either side. I can argue the, the benefits of being a salaried employee. Yeah. And I can argue the benefits of being an entrepreneur. But that's not what this, I, this, um podcast is about right uh, so as as a let's get back performer. on track so we don't take vacations because 
because we have a difficult time enough earning money. <laughs> Okay, so there's different reasons why we don't take vacations. It's not just because we're workaholics. Right. There, okay. are, there are a number of reasons. All right. So, yes, we haven't taken a formal vacation for... I don't think we've ever been on a formal vacation together. Uh, so there's always some business to be done, but we enjoy every time we get to travel. And, there are always and adventures. Yeah. Which is what this podcast is about, our adventures. Right? Yes. Uh, because, you know... I would like to go to Hawaii someday. And I will probably look into places that I can perform. Yeah. Which would be fun. Sure. Yeah. 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 It's a viable market. Yeah. But I think like public speakers do the similar thing is, you know, they bring their family along for a vacation, vacation when they go do their. I've I've seen that. Sure. Yeah. So like, I don't think, well, again, those are mostly entrepreneurs entrepreneurial people mm-hmm. usually uh so yeah why do we not take vacations why can't we rest you're or a why workaholic can't we va- well yes <laughs> <laughs> yesterday was hard okay yeah, I understand. this is day it's, three it's, in a row but off. that's that's the life of an entrepreneur i suppose the goal every entrepreneur's goal is to get to a point that uh you have a staff of people whom you can trust, and that is when you get to turn yourself off once Do in a while. Do the four-hour work week to Maybe. Paris. Yeah, um, the, you know, I, I imagine that that's the goal. I'm, I'm not sure. As an entertainer, I can't hire somebody to do, do that part job. for me. Yeah. I, I would love to hire somebody to be my manager or my agent, uh, things like that, um, because I think there would be certainly self-sustaining earnings to to roll that ball i suppose but um i uh, yeah uh, i feel a responsibility to my own business when we are traveling to announce myself uh, the, it was one of the great benefits of uh performing as a variety artist in burlesque shows because uh, when i was out of town uh, anywhere in the country and performing a corporate show those generally end by 8 p.m uh, i was able to go moonlight in the burlesque show locally right. so that's uh, what i was gonna say like i thought the difference might be the burlesque sideshow gig performer versus the salaried performer which i don't know that there's a lot of salaried performers anymore maybe on broadway and then tours it's, uh, yeah, yeah, very few. Yeah. I think um, Cirque well, takes yeah. care of their employees. Yeah. and their employees. Um, yeah, the, the performers in Cirque shows are employees. Okay, so Vegas too, uh, sorry. Yeah, but... I forget that there's still shows in Vegas because <laughs> they're not showgirl shows. <laughs> there are shows in Vegas, <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. So we don't take vacations, but I also wanted to talk about how we don't observe holidays, really. No, and that's essentially training from being an artist and a performer. Yeah. The, the, as a performing artist, we often have to work on holidays. Yeah, yeah, because people are playing on holidays. Mm-hmm. And when you're an entertainer or a service per- a person of service in the service industry, you work when people are playing. Yeah, there so. were many, many years. Every New Year's Eve would be booked until midnight, of course. Yep. Uh, sometimes together. Yeah. 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 Our last, our last one was, not so fun. But. Well, yeah. We'll just we'll tell a That's little a tale about that. That's a juicy bit for another day, yeah. I think. <laughs> but yeah, even like I'm gonna probably work on my birthday. I haven't asked for it off. My birthday happens to be a national holiday. It's it's just so, built into us this yeah. idea of working on special occasions or whatever. I um, guess, and it doesn't bother me. I don't feel like. I'm being, uh, like, my life experience is detracted from by working on my birthday. Because I I feel like we celebrate and do special things, what people would do on special occasions on regular days. Because we have that freedom as entrepreneurs Mm -hmm. to be like, okay, I'm done working at 3 o'clock. I want to go take the family on a picnic. Sure. Whereas employees, 
who work Monday through Friday and have Saturday, Sunday off, do that only on the weekends, which is why the parks are full. There's, you know, just a lot of people crawling around. That's a, there's a great benefit to taking the family to places, whether it's a, a park for lunch or an amusement park mm -hmm. uh, on a Tuesday afternoon, pretty well have the place to ourselves. Pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> that was our experience last last week, I guess. Sure. Um, but yeah, it's the cheaper days to travel too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because there's not a lot of people traveling. So they like hike up the prices when normal people are traveling. So just a hint, if you're trying to travel for cheaper, just take the middle, middle of the week off to go. Do a three-day trip, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah, then you'll have to work Monday and Friday. And yeah, that would be fun. You brought up the working on holidays, and, it, and yeah. it sent me to a place I haven't been in a long time. I, in a previous relationship, committed myself to performing in a group act that required a number of rehearsals, one of which was on Valentine's Day. And for years and years and years, that was brought up... Afterwards? Afterwards, yeah. And, and not just around the holiday, but I heard about it all the time. It was a permanent scar that I caused because I worked for two hours on Valentine's Day. Wow. So some and people don't understand that idea that you wouldn't take the day off. Right. So we talk a lot about relationships in on this podcast. And for some reason, it just comes up like this is another thing that that's part of that beginning stages of the relationship of where your values are, I guess. Sure. What you value. And you value work. You value your art. You and my commitment to... A group of people, you know what I mean? So Yeah, but you have a commitment to that, or you had a commitment to that person. And true. clearly, true. Valentine's Day was an important day to that person. Apparently so, yes. Okay, because <laughs> I don't give a rip, because Every my last Valentine's partner, day. no, my <laughs> last partner, the girl's dad, we, we hooked up. The week before Valentine's. So our anniversary was 2-7. Oh, I see. Yeah. So we celebrated a week before everybody else, which made it mostly cheaper and not full. Like, you know, Valentine's week. Some people try to celebrate the week after or the weekend after because restaurants are ridiculously full and True. all that stuff. So, like, I guess that's mostly what I wanted to talk about is, like, all of these rules or ways of being in this society are like set up like we don't have to celebrate valentine's day on valentine's day no i don't have to celebrate my birthday on my birthday i mean yes be grateful i lived another year and i get to start another year today but i don't care if there's cake on that day or the day after or three days after that's you know? One of the many ways we are compatible because yeah. I don't really well, make a fuss about. We still need to do your fiftieth birthday surprise yeah, that's, party. Yeah, that's that's a year plus. So behind yeah, we're us. we're <laughs> we're a year behind, but there was a, days, a little thing called be... a pandemic. Yeah, that limited our ability to observe my fiftieth birthday. Yeah, well, I'd have to get on Facebook to talk to all five thousand of your friends and. That'd be a long list of... You can reach 5,000 people with just a click, I, I guess. I don't know. It's algorithms. I'm not no. reaching that many people. Anyway. Mm hmm So, yeah. Um, I, I really don't have much to say except for this is just kind of how we're wired. We're wired a little bit differently than the employee mindset. I think it is and one of the major ways that we as entertainers are different and differently programmed than... Other people. Yeah. So we don't take vacations. We don't really we observe do, holidays. We do seize opportunities. So okay. uh, there have been occasions when I've been booked out of town and we've made a fun trip uh, out of that. Yeah, we um, add a day or two before or sure, after. Sure, sure. Yes, so, like Paris. Yeah, we, we take advantage of, of those kinds of opportunities, but we don't plan a vacation. Yeah. yeah. And it's, 
So I work at the airport and I see families going on trips all the time. And I'm you know, going to assume unless it's for a funeral, it's for a fun trip, a vacation sure. of yeah. sorts. And then there's people that travel for work. Very different energies that they're exhibiting. Sure. Yeah. I just, I can't fathom it. Like, really. I've been wanting to save for a trip to take the girls to Disneyland during fall break. Mm -hmm. And I just, I don't know. I can't justify that expense. Mm. Well, I can perform out there. That you're not going to get paid what it's going to cost to go to Disneyland for four days. To take a, a um, family of four to Disneyland for four days. Possibly not. I don't know. There's There are a couple of opportunities out there. Yeah. I think that for us, every day is an adventure. Is, you know, like the definition of a vacation is to vacate from your life. Right? We have no need to do that, really, Exactly. Right? That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I say. I can't justify the expense. That, I could justify uh, what we spent miraculously just under $3,000 to go to Paris for a week. Like, that's... I don't know how we did that. I don't even know how we did that either. Honestly, I'm just like, maybe I did the math wrong. I think it only cost us $3,000 or maybe $3,300 because that was the tickets for the... The actual reunion. Sure. So it's like 300 or 350. Um, but yeah, we have no need to vacate our lives. No. No. This is interestingly uh, has a relationship with the conversation we had last night uh, and the idea that dressing up every day, being in <sighs> costume every day, yes. does not. It, 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 we we don't feel compelled to dress for Halloween, for example, or you know we don't we don't no. wear costumes because we always wear costumes. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe yeah. that's an episode. That's a whole episode. Yeah. We'll do that in like October or something. Sure, that's yeah. a good Halloween episode. Yeah. Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, well, I'm curious. I would love to hear your thoughts on vacations and how you are wired to think about vacations because I mean. We don't ever feel a need to escape our lives. No. We do have days of rest. We do have days where we just chill the F out. We do. We but do. We don't plan. We don't, you know, look forward six months to a year and be like, oh, we're going to Iceland. Ooh, that sounds fun. As always, you can reach us at onebigcaper.com with any of your questions or observations. Yeah. You can email us or you could comment down below. Or, yeah, there's links. Go look at the show notes and the description and find the links to contact us, share your thoughts, because we're performers living in this world and just kind of, I'm, I'm very curious. I'm curious how, how people live their lives. Yeah, we're looking yeah. forward to hearing from you. Yeah, thanks for listening. Thank you. We can't keep doing this without you. Give us just a little bit of your time by subscribing, sharing, rating, or talking about One Big Caper with someone else. We truly appreciate your support. We want to hear your stories. Visit OneBigCaper.com to get to know us even more. This episode of One Big Caper was published in 2022. All rights to broadcast in whole or in part are the property of Gazellus Productions, LLC. <laughs>